Hello and a very warm welcome to a breezy Shetland here. I'm Jeanette Budge and I'm a knitting designer and tutor um, and focus on Fair Isle knitting and um, I really love colour. Colour is my thing that I love to play with. I wanted to share this podcast with you um, because I absolutely love knitting and uh, I wanted to share some of the joys of Shetland and some of our Shetland history and some of our beautiful scenery as well. So I was born and brought up on the west side of Shetland um, on a small craft and while I was growing up in the 70s then my mum knitted um, yoke cardigans and jumpers, jumpers mostly, a bit like this one here. Um, so the body was made on the machine by someone else and then my mum uh, hand knitted the yoke and grafted on the, the neck and the cuffs as well. They're all done in the machine. So while I was growing up then my mother was always holding balls of yarn up to the window and trying to decide would she use this colour or that colour and things like that. Um, the bodies of the, of the jumpers were often uh, chosen by uh, the orders that came in, but the yokes, they had a bit more freedom as to how to place the colours themselves. Um, and I think my mother enjoyed doing that. Many Shetlanders at that time were knitting to sell, especially if they were at home with children. And um, they would either have a knitting machine that they could work away on and make the bodies or they were hand knitting the yokes as my mother did. My grandmother, however, she uh, focused more on feral gloves. These were the uh, gloves with the star on the back of the hand and plain fingers. Um, and I hope to show you an example of that in a later episode. Um, so a little bit about myself, I um, trained in uh, IT, I was on an IT help desk for 12 years and then I retrained as an aromatherapist and had children. I have two teenage daughters and a husband and um, I now focus on knitting and uh, teaching feral knitting to people. I guess that Shetland Wool Week has a lot to, to thank for that, that um, going to some Wool Week events way back in 2013-2014 then, um, that inspired me to and ignited my passion, I guess you would call it, um, in even further in feral knitting. Um, I guess that at that time I was, before that I only knitted uh, a little bit now and again, but since then uh, I've really knitted all year round. Shetlanders often don't knit in the summer months um, because there's too much else to be getting on with and enjoying the, the nice weather outside. Hopefully we get some nice weather in the summer. And um, yeah, and uh, I thought I'd share a little bit about what the future podcasts would uh, look like. Um, so I hope to have a dialect word um, of the podcast and explain a little bit about what that word is and um, how it would be used in, in context and um, you know how, how we would say it as Shetlanders. It's often easy to look and see how something is written but you're never quite sure how it's pronounced. Um, and also maybe share a little bit about our Shetland knitting history as well. Uh, so yeah, I hope that you find it interesting and um, you enjoy the podcasts and please leave comments or um, with anything that you would like me to cover or speak about. Um, I also demonstrate at the Shetland Textile Museum so if you have questions about the Textile Museum I'll see if I can answer them for you. And um, yeah, I'll show you a few little things that I've brought along, um, some of the things I've made in the past. So this is the Clickham and Cowell 
This is one that I produced really as a practice piece instead of doing a swatch for this cardigan. And um, you've, if you follow my Instagram, you've probably seen uh, some photographs of this already. This is now available as a single pattern on Ravelry and also on my website. Um, so you can have a go at knitting that. Um, it's corrugated rib on the, the edge here. And this is a pico hem. That's quite easy to do. It's just a yarn forward and a two together at this edge. And then the other rows are just plain knitting. And then it's folded over and caught in as a hem. Uh, and then this is just a feral motif. Uh, this was inspired by my cousin's husband. He was the lead Jarl, the lead Viking, which is the Jarl at the Larrick of Pallia, um, which is the biggest of Pallia in Shetland, uh, two years ago. And he had this motif or something similar uh, on one of the shields there. And that inspired me to to make this cowl. And I guess there's a little bit of fiery colours in there as well. Um, one of the things that me and my mum does as a class is these feral yoke bags. And the idea with this is that you're, um, you do two stars and two trees. The trees are here in the corners. And this is the same as on the feral yokes. And so that you can um, learn all the techniques and practice your colourways before you actually have to do a whole cardigan. Um, but you've also got something that's practical and useful at the same time. It's just a little drawstring bag that you could um, keep something smelly in or use as a gift bag. Um, you know, as a knitter, I would love a ball of wool in this little bag. That would be a really nice gift for someone. Um, so there's many different uses that you could have for that. Um, this is just another colourway that I did for this one. And this one has a lace top on it, so you can try out different edgings. I'll see if I can show you that a little clearer. And that's just another Pico edging cast off. I like a kind of scalloped edge. That's something that I liked. And then if you're new to colour work, not stranded knitting, then you can just do two colours. And uh, so this one is, is just done in a cream and a fawn that you can see there. One of the things that we always use here in Shetland, or most people anyway, is a leather knitting belt. Uh, some of you may have seen people using them before. So you wear this around your middle like a belt, um, but this padded end is at the side. If you're right-handed, it sits at the, under your armpit, at your waist on your right-hand side. And then you put um, your empty long double-pointed needle into the belt, and then you begin to knit on it. I'll give you some demonstrations of that in future episodes as well and tell you a bit about the benefits and how the belt came about and um, why Shetlanders used it as well. Um, this is um, a hat that I did for last year's agricultural show um, and Jimison and Smith um, set uh, competitors at the agricultural show, a challenge with um, eight colours, and you have to use at least five in the design. I think I used seven in this one. Um, and it's a very popular competition, and there's lots of different categories. This was the hat category, and there was also um, jumpers and gloves and other accessories was separate, other separate categories. I didn't win, sadly, but I still like the hat. What else do I have here? 
This was a hat that I did, that I, I'm planning to write the pattern of. This is what I'm calling my ultimate, um, or the description of it anyway. I need some pattern names, call, names suggestions maybe. But this was um, me trying to, to, to knit an ultimate hat for myself. So I've got, it's in double knitting, Jefferson's or Shetland double knitting, and it's got a turn up brim. It's quite long so that if I have my hair tied up, then I can get the ponytail up inside it. The crown is actually a twined knitting stitch, uh, which um, gives it more density and thickness, and uh, it's a really warm hat. I've also had it lined it with uh, an old jumper, old lamb's wool jumper that I found at a charity shop that was felted, so that makes it extra, extra warm. And it's not so much that we, it's really cold in Shetland, it was, uh, we rarely get minus temperatures during the day, but with the wind, it makes it feel so much colder and drives the, the wind into your ears in particular for me. Um, and, you know, it can be, it just make it walk very unpleasant if your ears get cold and the wind gets through into them. So this was what I was trying to do. And I just started knitting and I've got a turn up a, a way of doing the brim here and I thought that it would be a bit boring just to have a plain hat so I added in a motif, a tree motif there. So this one I'm hoping to write a pattern for as well. Um, if anybody's got any information on how I make myself do that, that would be great. <laughs> Um, what else have I got? This is just a little headband that I did. Um, yeah. I like making like an ombre effect as well as doing more contrasting colours like this one. This one is just about to come off the needles. This is a, a hat to match a scarf that, a lace scarf that I have. I've been knitting this plain, I started by knitting this plain part here. This was, I cast on it our local airport in Shetland at Sumbra um, on my way to my Norwegian trip. If anybody has been following my Instagram or Facebook feed, then you'll see that I've had a magnificent trip to Norway. Magnificent. Um, so I cast this on in, in Sumbra and this is going to be folded in inside there. So this part was done on a circular needle and then I'd started on the long double point and so I took my knitting belt with me and everything. So that's the hat I'm just about to put uh, my grafter or my darning needle uh, through the last remaining stitches and then I'll have to run in all the ends. Uh, <laughs> we never liked that job. I saw one of these memes on Facebook uh, that says, Alexa, weave in my ends. And that's what I would like. But if you get a good program on the TV and you get started, then it's done in no time. Sometimes as well, to trick myself, I start from this end and do ten. And I start from the other end and do ten. And then eventually we meet in the middle. So that's that one there. So I hope to be able to show you some more of my feral knitting and maybe some tips along the way and let me know what you'd like to see and hear about and um, if you've got any questions about me and my knitting and in my next episode I'll tell you all about my Nothing tripped in our way, because it really was fabulous. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, and we'll see you all again soon. Cheerio, you know.